For years, humans have gazed at the stars, contemplating the possibilities of first contact with an alien race. Will we exchange gifts of peace or weapons of war? Weapons, definitely weapons, like these ones. Ben 10, protector of Earth and wielder of the Omnitrix. And the Green Lantern, galactic lawman and bearer of the Power Ring. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Benjamin Tennyson was just your average 10-year-old boy. He loved video games, hated school, and was prepared to have the most boring summer vacation ever until destiny fell from the sky. Upon discovering a strange crash-landed alien device, it stuck itself upon his wrist with secrets that it hid. Now he's got superpowers, he's no ordinary kid, he's Ben 10. Sorry, Wizzy. Just can't help myself, that theme song's so damn catchy! This strange device was the Omnitrix, a portable library of intergalactic genetic data that can transform its user into a variety of different alien species. Sounds like the perfect way to get freaky with some alien babes from all across the galaxy. Well, you do you. But the cosmic warlord Vilgax had something different in mind. With the Omnitrix technology, he planned to create an army of superpowered aliens and conquer the universe. Yeah, typical villain stuff. But old hentai face would have to wait, cause Ben got the watch first and became a superhero. Well, okay, first he burned down a forest, but then he got busy with the hero stuff. The Omnitrix contains a built-in radio, universal translator, distress signal, a self-defense pulse blast against anyone trying to force it off Ben's wrist, and, as a bonus, it can tell time. And whenever Ben comes across a new alien he'd like to cosplay, it can scan their DNA so he can add them to his transformation collection. And he's got a ton to choose from. He's got alien forms that can control the elements like lightning, water, ice, earth, and fire with his very first transformation ever, Heat Blast, along with some just beautiful fire puns. I'm totally hot. <laughs> ah, you gotta respect the classics. As forearms, he's strong enough to create shockwaves with mere punches. As accelerate, he can run fast enough to dodge lightning. As diamond head, he can survive massive explosions like they were nothing. But if you prefer brains over brawn like myself, he can increase his intelligence with alien forms like Brainstorm, who has an IQ of one nonillion. That's a one followed by 30 zeros, and more than three octillion times greater than the highest recorded IQ in history. He can fly as Jet Ray, duplicate himself with Ditto, and eat his feelings away as Upchuck. Wiz, that's really not a healthy way to handle issues. You know, you're right, Boomstick. Yeah, he should really just stick to alcohol. And if he ever wants to suck for some reason, he's got Waka Trout, which is a fish with legs. And that's it. Probably Ben's worst transformation, and that's saying a lot considering he has an alien literally named The Worst. If old-timey horror movies are your thing, Ben can transform into every classic monster you can think of, because I guess zombies and werewolves were aliens all along. I knew it. Through different forms, Ben can manipulate the fundamental forces of the universe, like gravity, radiation, time, and energy. Feedback, for instance, once absorbed the entirety of the Big Bang, and then fired it at a robot supervillain, creating a time loop and saving the universe. Yeah, as he's got used to hero work, Ben's aliens started getting pretty insane. Like Way Big, who's basically a giant kaiju who can fire a cosmic ray from his chest, powerful enough to hurt a being made of pure energy. And let's not forget my personal favorite alien, Mole Stash. He's a mole who punches people with his mustache. <laughs> you can't write that. Truly a fearsome addition to Ben's massive arsenal. But contrary to the show's very specific title, Ben's Omnitrix doesn't just have access to 10 alien forms. In fact, it has 1,912. He's no ordinary kid. He's Ben 1,912. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't quite roll off the tongue like Ben 10, does it? Well, uh, let's see if I can take one of these babies for a spin. Where did you get that? Don't worry about it. Whoa. Well, the Omnitrix does have one drawback. It usually has an automatic cooldown period for a few minutes between transformations, because overuse can permanently disfigure the user's DNA. All right, forgot to say that four seconds earlier. If you'll excuse me, I need to pee out my face. <sighs> I'll fix this later. 
This cooldown would be a recurring issue for Ben until he discovered Master Control, a special code which, when input into the Omnitrix, just let him use it however he wanted. And if he's ever on Death's Door, the watch will automatically pop him into whatever alien body it thinks he needs at the time to survive whatever's happening. And there's one form that's almost always the best answer. Alien X. Born in the forge of creation beyond the multiverse itself, Alien X is a celestial sapien, the most powerful species in the universe. He's basically a cosmic god who can punch planets to bits, fly faster than light, duplicate himself, control minds, use telekinesis, reverse time, warp reality, and even just straight up erase people from existence. It takes a lot to get their attention, and that's fine. We don't want it. Why not? They could just blink, and we'd be gone. Alien X is so tough, he survived the destruction of the entire universe by the Annihilarg and didn't feel a thing! Like, his durability was so through the roof, he didn't even realize total cosmic annihilation was happening right on top of him. Based on rough estimates made by a NASA astrophysicist, the total mass energy of the universe in joules is four. Well, that doesn't seem very impressive. Followed by 69 zeros. Oh, there it is. And to top it off, Ben as Alien X went and just remade an entirely new universe identical to the old one. First of all, how the hell? Second, since he just made a copy universe? That technically means that all those characters we watched through the whole show are still dead! Damn, dude! Throw somebody a bone or something! However, Celestial Sapiens are composed of multiple personalities, and if they can't unanimously agree on what action to take, which can take billions of years, all that power is basically useless. But Ben convinced his extra personalities that that's a really goddamn stupid and he should have full control all the time, so it doesn't matter. Why doesn't he just go full Alien X all the time? Well, a little variety doesn't hurt, right? Plus, even without his alien forms, Ben is pretty clever and has a knack for getting himself out of trouble, even when things get really weird. And he's saved the universe more times than he can count. He's defeated Vilgax when he had the power of a Cthulhu god, ended the hybrid conspiracy, and whooped another celestial sapien, the Galactic Gladiator, by flying so fast he created a galaxy-sized black hole. We can tell from the size of the black hole in relation to the galaxies in the background, as well as how long it took to create, that Alien X must have been flying approximately seven quadrillion times faster than light speed. I get it, Wiz. Alien X is totally overpowered, but Ben doesn't keep any of those powers as a human. Not much of a problem when the Omnitrix can instantly transform him fast enough to catch the Big Bang. The only thing truly holding Ben back throughout his hero career was his immaturity, being a ten-year-old and all. Oh yeah, like that one time he messed with the Omnitrix and accidentally set it to self-destruct. After charging up for a few days, it would destroy the whole universe on its own. So that's not great. Fortunately, Ben grew into a reliable and wildly successful hero by the time he reached the age of 16. He would continue his hero work into the future, eventually adopting the name Ben 10,000. The world can rest easy with Ben 10 as its first and best line of defense. Six Six and Volcanus? What are they doing here? About to get their alien butts kicked, that's what. Go in here. Hal Jordan was just your average, devilishly handsome ladies man and hotshot test pilot who discovered a crash-landed alien ship in the desert. Okay, so maybe he's not so average. I'll say, he found this guy Ob and Sir dying in a crashed spaceship who gave Hal a little green ring before kicking the bucket. And so, by reciting an ancient oath, Hal Jordan would become a Green Lantern. Brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern light! The Green Lantern Corps is a universe-spanning law enforcement organization founded by the immortal Malthusians, also known as the Guardians of the Universe. Hey, they're space oopaloopas! More like leprechauns. Okay, fine, whichever mythical creature you want. No, no, I mean a group of them traveled to Earth centuries ago and literally evolved into modern-day leprechauns. I knew they were real! Anyway, the Green Lantern Corps has patrolled the known universe for three billion years, recruiting members of every shape and size. Including a living planet, a sentient smallpox virus, some guy with an exploding volcano for a head, a living math equation, and a squirrel. Man, even after all these years, Wiz, comics are weird. Imagine what it felt like for Hal when he began training on the Guardian homeworld Oa. 
Over time, he grew to be one of the Corps' greatest members and defender of the universe. Just with that ring of his, it might look tiny, but if Mjolnir, Yoda, and years of therapy have taught me anything, it isn't the size that counts, it's what you do with it. Uh, right. The Green Lantern Power Ring is actually one of the most impressive weapons ever made. It's most well known for its ability to create hardened light constructs that function identically to what they're inspired by. Anything from boxing gloves to machine guns to an entire solar system. While a ring's wielder must be familiar with the object they're creating, they don't necessarily need to know all the ins and outs for it to function. The ring's energy can boost Hal's strength and speed, and also protect him with a force field. He can shoot lasers, phase through objects, turn invisible, read minds, heal wounds, and fly through space faster than light. The only true limit to a Power Ring's utility is its user's imagination, insofar as allowing the Green Lanterns to bend the rules of the universe to their whims. They can transmute matter and energy, manipulate time, form pocket dimensions, and warp the fabric of reality. And even though Ab and Sur went out like a bitch, the ring makes a competent Green Lantern really tough to kill. It has built-in defenses to protect against mind control, and it can sometimes yank its owner out of harm's way all on its own. It can even defend against multiversal erasure events, like when Kilowog survived the crisis on infinite Earths. That's right, this guy tanked a freaking retcon to the face. Whatever's in these rings, I want it in my dune buggy stat. That would be pure, unfiltered willpower. Yeah, how many miles is a gallon you think that okay, is? Okay, well, a Green Lantern's ability stems from their own willpower. The stronger their will is, the more their ring can do. So if willpower is green, does that make fear brown? Yellow, actually, as dictated by the emotional electromagnetic spectrum, an energy field from which all emotion in the universe is derived. Kinda like if the force from Star Wars was a rainbow of feelings. And Hal's got more willpower busting out than anybody else, which makes him really damn powerful. And really damn reckless. Green Lantern got this! His enormous power has led to his possession by Parallax, an entity of fear, and caused entire planets to fall. But it's been said that knowing true fear made Hal's will even stronger than before. Like when he went up against this blue dickweed Krona, who took control of all these space animal gods that embodied the different rainbow spectrum emotions. Including Ion, the green basking shark of willpower. Yes, I know. Hal was able to overturn Krona's plan, which meant overpowering the literal embodiment of all willpower in the universe with his own willpower. That sounds... Uh, impressive? Impossible? Impressible? Hal's been knocked through a planet, blasted by a supernova, and punched by the reality-shattering Superboy Prime. He was fast enough to fly to Earth from a planet at the edge of the universe, and factoring how DC's observable universe is at least 100 trillion light-years in diameter, Hal must have been flying well over one and a half quintillion times the speed of light. And without the ring, Hal once had to pilot a ship traveling over light speed manually. As in, there were planets and stars in his way, and Hal had to steer. And since he can match the god of willpower, he can pull off crazy will feats that other Green Lanterns have done, like when Kyle Rayner held back a big bang. But to be fair, the power ring is not perfect. It does carry a finite charge, and should he expend too much energy too quickly, he'll need his power battery to refuel. Also, if his opponent can ruin his willpower, or even just his belief in himself, Hal won't be able to use the ring, which is lame. Yeah, these powers are pretty complex. Batman once had a plan to trick Kyle into thinking he was blind, and because he believed he was, the ring reacted to his thoughts and actually made him blind. But Hal's too badass to let a little sadness take him out for good. Hell, he's got the cojones to arrest God. But Wiz, I gotta address the yellow elephant in the room. Why the hell are Green Lanterns weak to yellow? Ages ago, yes, the Green Lanterns couldn't affect anything yellow because Parallax had messed with their power source, but that is no longer the case, so Hal isn't held back by colors. And really, that's not even the worst weakness a Green Lantern ever had. Oh yeah, way back in the day, a Green Lantern went rogue and tried to take over a planet of people with crude wooden weapons. And so as a great little F.U., the gods decided to make him weak to wood right before the blows started landing. Ah, good thing it's not a problem for Hell. Whether it be brightest day or blackest night, all should respect the emerald light of the Green Lantern. Or he'll willpower you to death, apparently. Give up? Please say no. You'll never catch me, Lantern. Bang. Ah! 
All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first! Hey, I'm Chad. I play Boomstick. And I'm Ben, and I'm sick. Yep. Uh, but we did want to tell you guys about our event that we put on every year called RTX in Austin, Texas. It's a super fun convention where we've got a million things going on. We've got video games and meet and greets and panels and signings and lots of fun stuff to do. And we hope you'll join us there. We can't wait to see you there. We've got a couple panels that we're going to be doing. Uh, there's one on Saturday, the Death Battle one. It's time for a Death Battle. We do it as, as often as we can. It's always fun having you guys there to talk about Death Battle and matchups and, and, and take questions, things like that. It's great. Uh, we got a signing right Right after that, uh, and then on Sunday we got our second panel, which is about a secret project we've been working on for a while now. Can't wait to share it with you guys. Yep, RTX is July fifth through seventh uh, again in Austin, Texas. Head to rtxevent.com, and we hopefully we'll see you guys there. I promise I will not be sick. You better not be. I hope not. Stay away from me. It's probably a good idea. It's time for a death battle. Hello! Green Lantern, best looking guardian of Sector 2814, at your service. I can give you ten good reasons right now to let me go! Sorry, kid. Seems you're carrying a Class A Galactic super weapon. I'll just take this. Okay, that's interesting. You're not the first doofus to try to take this! It's hero time! Lights out, Punchy. Come on, kid. Let's stop this before it gets heated. Too late. Hey, you ever seen a supernova? Several, actually. I So lame. I bet I could even beat you as gray matter. What? I did a thing, literally. Cute. Ew! I stepped in loser. This is Alien X. He controls all of reality. This is over. I don't care what kind of power you got! Brightest day and blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power! Green Lantern's light! I don't care what kind of power... Reality includes time. Done, huh? Thanks for the tip. You're not the first doofus to try to take this. It's hero to. Ah! Ah! Ew, I stepped in loser. <laughs> oh, it hurts to laugh. Don't ask. K.O. Well, uh, that's another miner on our board of death. Ben's absurd versatility and ingenuity put up a stellar fight, but Hal had the tools and skills he needed to ensure a victory. 
While the Omnitrix is millions of aliens is just nuts, he can only ever use one at a time, while Hal always has access to all of his powers. Even with the flexibility of master control, this meant Ben was always playing catch-up. Not a great position to be in considering Green Lantern's might. Ben's diamond head form was tough, sure, but he wasn't surviving a planet exploding in his face. Accelerate was wicked fast, but not fast enough to cross the universe in an hour. And way big was really strong, but he didn't hit as hard as a supernova. Hal simply outclassed all of Ben's options, except for one. Yeah, how the hell did Hal beat Alien X? That thing is basically omnipotent. Well, not exactly. Celestial Sapiens are extremely powerful, but they can be beaten in battle and have failed in the past. Like the time Alien X recreated the universe. He only did that because he couldn't stop it from being destroyed in the first place. Alien X could definitely match a lot of Hal's power, but Hal had defenses against all of X's. Mind control? The ring protects Hal's head. Mess with time? Hal can do that too. Trying to wipe him from existence? Please, Green Lanterns can survive an entire universe being erased. Likewise, Alien X has never shown any defenses against the same kinds of things that Hal could replicate, like mind control, transmutation, and time manipulation. Ben and his alien forms put up a great fight, and Alien X is easily one of the most powerful combatants we've ever seen on Death Battle. However, Hal had the speed, versatility, and literal willpower necessary to claim his victory. Guess you could say Hal was definitely the ringer for this fight. Ugh. Aw, oh, Wiz, don't be green with envy. That pun was 10 out of Ben. The winner is Green Lantern. I'm Sam, he's Luis. Neither of us are Wizard Moonstick, but don't go anywhere just yet because we're about to announce the next matchup. And if you want the battle music, you can click the download link below. Uh -huh.